the Transformers live action movies we should say have quite a struggled past. In 2007 we got a far from perfect but good first movie which was followed by a silly, thanks to the writer's strike, but still memorable action scene second movie. We thought there would be finally a story based third one which forgot the story introduced at the beginning of the film halfway through the playing time so they tried a sequel that was considered a soft reboot which was a huge mess and then just forget this one. But to everyone's big surprise, in 2018, after more than 10 years, we finally got a no flawless, but lovable, cute, kind, family friendly and last but not least, good Transformers movie where we got to this point hugging slow. So we became more optimistic about how this new, more lovable, soulful direction would be carried forward. Then more than 4 years passed. Of course there was the pandemic period, the release date was delayed several times for various reasons, but it was a particularly long time so we became more and more curious about what the Rise of the Beast had in store for us. Let's just say the voices at the beginning were quite divisive. Although the characters were still very faithful to their G1 self in appearance, except for you Pablo because this is not Viljack, but you could already see from far away this will be another Bayformers like soulless something not even mentioning the Bumblebee movie events and of course spiced up with some woke. Uh, oh wait, you think I'm writing these lines after I saw the movie? N no, not at this point. But then let's hope for the best, prepare for the worst and head to the cinema. Well, it was something and okay I guess? Yeah. The Transformers Rise of the Beasts turned out to be a simple summer popcorn blockbuster, far from perfect, but an enjoyable CGI orgy with zero surprises and thank heaven, only a few wokeness here and there, so it went with the soda. A through the film plays in two places, the first half in Brooklyn and the second half in Peru, the movie was not about that black and Latino culture, as the director stated at the beginning, unless for him it's the fact at the introduction of the generic human characters, they get some boring tug of war with their evil white bosses, I hope that's not what he meant. Long story short and spoiler free, they have to find the transport key which can be used to travel through space and time. That's all. As I mentioned, our human characters are briefly introduced at the beginning. We have a I need the money for my family guy, a I am very good at museum pieces girl, scene after scene, thank heaven it doesn't take too long, and they fall into the fight between the Autobots and the Terrorcons, which is later joined by the Maximals as well in Peru, some fiddling with the key, and at the end comes the big spectacular battle, yada yada yada. Actually the problem is that if you seen even one trailer, you actually seen the whole movie. But if you haven't, that's not a problem, because every single second is so clearly predictable that only then you won't realize what's going to happen in the next scene if you have never seen a motion picture in your life. Optimus, if we don't destroy the key now, the bad guys will get it and will have to solve the problem in a spectacular showdown at the end of the movie, well what's gonna happen next? In terms of characters, I can't say so much because there aren't many of them, Mirage is our only main character, the two Optimus, Eraser and Scourge got some dialogue and roles, maybe RC and B a little bit but that's all about it, the others just background dancers. If we take them out of the movie, we don't lose literally anything. If I include all robot versions, we have a total of 17 models, but for what reason, when the Bumblebee movie proved that sometimes less is more. A perfect example is Stratosphere, who was only introduced in the movie so that the Autobots could fly to Peru. That's it. Pablo, no, not Will Jack, Pablo, is in the film to make a Vogue speech intended as a silly joke and to make the director happy that he was able to squeeze in a reference that isn't even Transformers. That's it. Mirage was particularly refreshing as the main character, we finally didn't have to listen to these beeping noises, but instead got a humorous, very likable, fun character, 
but I can easily imagine that not everyone will like his style. But I still don't understand why he wasn't jazz, because specifically it would be his character and will kill mode, but that's besides the point. The two Optimuses were ok, both Prime and Moo broke their usual leader character, Prime even had a minimal character development, at the beginning he doesn't trust humans very much, but gradually he threads them as companions in the end, but they were a little bit scary and unsympathetic, I can understand if not everyone will like this. PRC and the others, they were running in the background, I don't know. I guess at this point you've already realized that, compared to the fact that I said the movie was ok, I'm not too excited. Because I didn't mention the fact I was bored. Unfortunately the film has a pretty big problem which is… it's empty. It delivers what it must, yes, it has its moments, yes, it can be funny, yes, but all in all we got a generic, very spectacular, everyday action movie, but nothing more. This is exactly why the film became very divisive, some people are so into it, some people hate it like hell, and honestly, both camps can be perfectly understood. If you're someone who loved it and will watch it 6000 times, I'm happy for you, have fun, I was half-hearted with it too. And if you are someone who doesn't like it, I can understand that as well, because I didn't get all of it either. I could also talk here about how the plot armor is so strong, which I have never seen before in my life, about the Jesus Simulator 2.0s and the resulting questions, why the hell can't everyone be like that, hashtag energonpools, or just the totally ridiculous physics, like a truck can be picked up by space sniffing, but a human isn't, those who have seen the movie know what I'm talking about, but honestly, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Oh and the music was utter crap, it literally killed the scenes for me. If you want to watch it, go ahead, I'm glad I did, I won't stop anyone, but I won't encourage you either, and if the question comes up what the next move will be about these movies, it doesn't matter guys, for 17 years they have no idea what direction should they take with this franchise, they got it right with the Bumblebee movie and then they let it go, next time there will be something else, if there will be something, I'm bored at this point, do what they want, 6.5 out of 10. And it's still a lot better movie than the Bayformers. Yeah.